Hello guys, on this tutorial we will see Head and Four in 3ds Max and how to render it with Arnold because I didn't touch it for a while, Head and Four is kind of a very old modifier but still flexible enough to be used uh, in today for some basic stuff so I did this example but we will see some of the basics behind it if you want this example I will share it with my patrons the Head and Far modifier is here for a lot of versions right now and it has not been touched much we have other uh, specific uh, plugins for it. We have Ornatrix, we have Hair Farm, that are two really popular plugins for hair with much more possibilities. And then Hair and Four in V-Ray, that for some basic stuff is also uh, pretty good. But Hair and Four can do uh, obviously some stuff by itself, and I will showcase uh, some of it. So let's go. So let's see Hair and Four in 3ds Max. We apply a Hair and Four modifier over your object, that in this case it's a plane, but can be whatever. And here you have it. Uh, some basic things that you can do, you can create different styles on the styling. In Hair and Four, one thing that you can do is load a preset. You have different types of styles, uh, if you want. You can style yourself your hair. Um, so basically you brush it, the guides. Remember, it's very important. Hair, it's basically, you have guides that it's these elements that you see here. If you don't have finish, finish styling, you can go down. And you have the display. We are displaying hairs. Hair and Four creates a guide over every vertex. So if you want more uh, guides, you will need to have a more dense mesh. And basically, with a more dense mesh, what you can do is you can tweak better each uh, element. And when you do physics, you will see that the physics are over guides. Here, it's just an interpolation between guides. So, less guides, less things to interpolate, less detail. Uh, that's something important. Now, if we render right away, we will see something on Arnold, but it's not what we want. We see a mesh. Really important press 8 and on FX, head and four, change this instead of buffer, change it to Mr. Prime. Head and four is old, so most of the things that we are using, this was for mental ray, but this is what Arnold is using as well to render a hair in a correct way. Now, knowing the display things, we can tweak different elements here, like the number of hair. We will need much more hair if you want something detailed, so let's go to 100,000. Hair segments, how many segments do you want? Uh, density, how dense, so you will have less density. The scale of the hairs, um, I will not tweak much here. Uh, the thickness is important, so we will need this way less thick. And when you render, we are still not rendering with any a particular shader. I think Arnold is overriding for something of his own. So let me cancel this. Uh, we need to go to the material shader parameters and this is all old stuff that is only valid for the scanline uh, renderer. What we want is to use our custom shader and we apply a shader here. And Arnold has very nice shaders for her. So if you go to material, Arnold, and we go to surface and standard hair, we will apply this to the apply shader instance. And remember, this is not doing anything right now. Forget about this right now. Everything will be controlled from here. And we have things like color. We have a base color with a color. Uh, but everything is controlled with these values for hair. So melanin of one means a very dark hair. Zero will be a less dark hair, will be more kind of white, uh, blonde hair. Then you have redness and melanin randomized that I don't think it's working in Arnold in 3ds Max. Uh, so we can go to 0.3 and melanin redness, let's keep it this way. You can control specular, stints, diffuse and multiple things. But right now you can create very cool uh, hair with only these values. Let's use Arnold Render View because I want only to render a section of this. If not, it will take a lot of time. So with shift drag, we will render only here a small section. So something we can see right away is that the hair is as interesting as it is the shape of the hair. Uh, we are not doing anything really exciting here. So let's tweak it a little. I will bring a little of thickness and we have flyaway parameters that it's some of the hairs 
will be like kind of loose. Clamping, for clamping you need to have a number of clamps, this create kind of a boronoi. Uh, you will see that if we press one, it tries to clamp values together. Uh, if we have it less, it will be more evident. Uh, so 150 clamps and maybe the strength, you don't want it at one, maybe something more so subtle and then you have different values for, to add randomness here. King parameters give some distortion on the base or on the node. Multistrand is that will add more hair per each hair. So if we add four hairs on each hair and then we do a root display. So we add, we are adding an, a randomization from the root, but they will all converge on the same place. Oh, except we have a deep display of something. Can be interesting, we can add twist there. But we get something like that. Uh, so let's see how this looks. I am on a laptop and hair is not the fastest thing to render. Again, because I am using transmission for the hair, that is where you will have the most accurate results. Uh, so let's keep this uh, going. Maybe I add too many multi strands. This takes quite a while. Uh, but remember, it's important to understand that with this color, basically it's using transmission to create that. If you don't want to have transmission and to have a faster rendering, what you can do is use the diffuse. So if we have the diffuse at one, for example, and we add whatever color we want, this will be extremely faster, but you will lose totally the look of the nice hair that Arnold produced. It's creating a very uh, a diffuse look. Uh, so it's way, way, way faster, but because it's not using transmission, it's way, way, uh, it produces a very flat look. I totally suggest to don't use diffuse if you don't know exactly what you are doing or you need something really fast. Uh, but normally you would like to have the diffuse at weight at zero and work with, uh, work with this. Now, something interesting, how do you change the color of this? Uh, if you want a specific color, what you can do is to put all these at zero and change the base color here. And you will see that the color of your hair will change based on the transmission of the color defined. But what if you need a map? And this gets a little more difficult and it's a common question in Arnold. To create a map to drive this, what you need to do is apply a map. I prepared here a noise map. You need it, you add it on the root color. If you want to see it clearly on the viewport, remember to put the root color white. And then if you want to see it applied from root to tip, drag and drop this to tip. And remember this to also have it white. So now the color is driven by this noise color. You can add a noise or whatever procedural or a texture. It will drive the color of the hair. But this is still not into Arnold. Arnold doesn't know about these parameters here yet. So what we, knew, what we need is a map, Arnold. We need a user data and a user data RGB. We need to add here root colors. And this will read the information that comes on the root color. And we can apply this on the base color. Remember, we can add it as well if we want on the diffuse, that I will do that right now, but just to show you in a fast way that it works, but, but don't do it when you need to do a final render. I will use the base color always for the final render. And as you can see, the color maps are applied. Um, something to have into account is that you cannot have a fade in from root to the tip as you was able to do before with a frame buffer. Um, it's a limitation of Arnold in 3ds Max right now. In Maya you can do it, you can add a UV map to map uh, each strand from root to tip. In Max, as far as I know, you cannot do that. Let me know in the comments if there is a way, but I think that it's not available right now in 3ds Max. So the hair will have the same color information from root to tip.
Now here it's using transmission to renderize in a nice way, so we will need to have more camera samples and maybe increase the specular and I guess that the transmission will help as well to get something much more accurate. On geometry subdivision and hair, we have hair curve and points, and you have a minimum pixel width to increase the pixel samples, so you will get more accurate results uh, if you need it with very uh, thin hair. When dealing with dynamics, you have here the dynamic display, but it's important to know that you are not interacting with the hair itself, you are interacting with the guides. So it's important when we have to deal with dynamics to go to the display section and display guides instead of display hairs. So we will be interacting with these guides. If you need more interaction, more accurate interaction, you will need to subdivide your base mesh. So each guide comes from each vertex, remember that. Uh, so we, if we have a less dense mesh, we ha will have less guides. The hair is an interpolation of these guides. So that's all. Now if we go to live, uh, you can move around so everything will interact. And I have this animation that will collide with this object. Things to have into account is the gravity, a stiffness and root hold. Root hold is how much will hold the root. Uh, so this is at one. And a stiffness, if you have it at one, this will be really stiff and you will see that nothing will interact actually. Uh, you need to have at least this uh, a slightly less than one. Oh, and it's not interacting because I don't have any collisions that are selected. So if I select this, you can see now that this is interacting. At one, I guess, it, also it, yeah, at one it will never interact. So always slightly less at 0 0.99 you will see that there is a collision but everything will try to stay at the same place it's kind of interesting for whatever you need to do but when you start decreasing this you can see that the interaction is quite fast and in real time you can do whatever you want now when you are happy with your collision now we are doing it live you need to switch to pre-compute select a stat file and run the simulation. This will save uh, the simulation guides into a file. So if you need to render, you need to do it this way. And when you are done, you will see that these guides affects actually the hair as well. But remember, these hairs are an interpolation of your guides. So if you don't have enough guides, you, maybe you will have some problems into your collisions. Now, uh, here you can add as well forces, but it's a little limited. You cannot increase subsamples here, the stiffness, uh, there is not so many options depending on what you need to do. So if you need more things than the dynamics itself on Hiram 4, one cool thing that you can do is to recreate your guides into Typeflow that I have it here. So let's, uh, you can turn the dynamics none, so there is no dynamics actually. And here I create my Typeflow that's shared with someone created on Typeflow group. I change a little some stuff, but basically what it's doing is selecting the original mesh and creating guides that I can see there. So I'm creating these dots and I will create the splines that are on the type spline. So now if we go to tools on spline deform, I can select these splines. And with this spline selected, basically now I can turn this off. And now the simulation is driven from Typeflow. Uh, you can see that I don't have dynamics, it's off here. Basically Typeflow is driving all what is happening here. So we have much more options because obviously uh, with Typeflow you can do whatever you want. I am driving this with the particle beams, but if you want, you can create a, a bullet physics to drive uh, the, sp the spline guides. You can create all types of crazy forces or uh, create rules that depending on the position, you will get more or less force. You have much more control. And as well, as you can see, it's really fast. Let me change some parameters on the type flow to see that this is happening. On the angle beam, for example, let's reduce the angle stiffness to 0.1 and you will see that it's recalculating and should be less stiff now. And you can see that 
as it's not as stiff as before, everything falls down because of gravity. The cool thing on top of that is that you have tight flow, but this is hair and fur. So if you want more uh, hair, because it's an interpolation of the guides, you can increase the number of hair and the simulation will not be slower at all. Uh, it's slower because the, the viewport uh, it has to display much more, but we can thinner these things now and you can see that they have a lot of hair uh, interacting with this sphere. So really interesting when you need to do more complex stuff with dynamics. So thank you a lot guys, please give it a comment, subscribe to the channel, uh, share it with your friends and thanks a lot to all my Patreons that make possible uh, these videos. Thank you guys and see you soon, bye!